Kitchen, episode six. Let's, Let's roll for sleeves. And get, get ready. ready. Since it's 2016, let's talk about 16 foods that generally people don't like. For example, celery, beets, oatmeal, yams, tuna fish, black beans, garbanzo beans, all sorts of beans, broccoli, spinach, liver, ginger, Brussels sprouts, lemon peel, fish. So why is it that people don't like these foods? Our bodies change, obviously, from when we're little until we're an adult. In fact, our bodies continue to change even after we're adults, from when you're in your 20s, 30s, 40s, 50s, and on up. As your body ages and as your body changes physiologically, so does your diet and so does your palate. You'd be surprised what things you used to like as a child that you no longer like as an adult. Cheese and chocolate combined. But you would also likely be surprised about what things you didn't like as a child that you now like as an adult. And since this is a month of presidential debate and President's Day in the United States, let's go over three examples of things our presidents haven't liked. President Obama. President Obama doesn't prefer candy in his trail mix. And that's okay. Did you know that George Bush the senior didn't like broccoli? He actually got a bad rap for that. People discredited him as a good example for our nation because he didn't like broccoli. That's what I call quibble nibble. Another example is President Garfield. President Garfield, who was assassinated only months after being inaugurated, happened to hate and have a disdain for oatmeal. How could someone possibly not like Mr. Quaker on the oatmeal? Beyond me. But you know what? That's okay. Because we all have our preferences, what part of a parkour kitchen is about is discovering the things you might like if you made them just a little different. Let's go over a few. Now you may have noticed that most of these things lie within what I call the vegetable kingdom. Why is that? Why are there so many vegetables the disdain of many people around the world? Well, possibly because we don't cook or prepare vegetables that well. In general, from what I remember growing up, vegetables were battered or boiled, and when they were served to you, they were often soggy and, well, gross. If you don't like the taste of fresh vegetables because of their strong taste, there's other things you can do to make them much more tasty. Let's start with Brussels sprouts. Here's your happy little Brussels sprout. Yeah, if you notice, this guy's frozen. We buy them both fresh and frozen. Largely, we use them in a sauté form. Actually, you can put Brussels sprouts in a pan that you put the Brussels sprout in. You add a little bit of seasoning, some olive oil, whatever you'd like to flavor it. You can cover it with aluminum foil and put it in the oven at 400 degrees or around there for roughly 20, 30, something 40 minutes. Just check the oven and make sure that these are all the way warmed through and crisp a little bit. If you want to add a little fun texture to them, simply remove the tin foil and put the oven on broil for about four minutes. Let's talk beans. Beans often get a bad rap. Why? Because some people say they do things to your body that isn't so pleasant, especially in public circumstances. Beans can be a great way to spruce up any meal though. If you add a can of black beans, a can of garbanzo beans, a can of red beans, can of lima beans, or any sort of other beans to a dish, a salad, or whatever you have. It can really add a lot of flavor and color and texture. Some do's and do nots with beans. Do not put beans in jello. Trust me, it doesn't ever turn out right. Do not add beans to your chocolate pudding. Do use garbanzo beans whenever you need a firm bean that holds up to a lot of mixing. For those of you that don't know, gabonzo beans are also what's used in hummus. So for all you pita chips and hummus fans out there, you can use gabonzo beans in the blender with a little bit of lemon, pepper, vinegar, salt, and any other mix in you'd like to add to make an amazing hummus. Mix it up. It'll likely be a little bit dry, so you'll have to add more lemon juice, a little bit more oil, maybe a little bit of water until you get just the right consistency. Let's talk tuna. And Mr. E. I'm sorry, this may be offensive, so plug your gills. Tuna is one of nature's best known secrets. Tuna fish in this little can 
has a lot of protein and a lot of flavor to it. Often we drain the tuna juice, only to try and add more stuff to it. When you're making tuna salad, or tuna fish, or any other thing with tuna, you can actually use that juice. You don't have to drain it down the sink. But if you want to, that's fine. Tuna is also a good ingredient for making tuna melts. Take some wholesome bread, put some tuna, add some barbecue sauce, mustard, and some cheese on top of that, and broil it in the oven for about uh, two to three minutes. You've got a great meal. Another note on tuna, you don't have to mix tuna fish with mayonnaise to make tuna fish. Add some barbecue sauce, tomato paste, or any sort of other sauce you'd want to it. You can also make tuna tacos, nachos. Tuna goes well with many things that you never thought possible. If you didn't like tuna as a kid, try using tuna as an adult. You'd be surprised that your palate's changed. You'll be surprised. You'd be surprised. You'd be surprised. You'd be surprised. You'd be surprised. Next, liver. A lot of us didn't like liver when, when we were little. And a lot of us still don't like liver now. Moving on. Broccoli. Broccoli is one of those cool vegetables that's like a miniaturized tree in your hand. I actually used to live off of broccoli while in college. I'd actually take these rubber bands and use them for all sorts of things around the house. Often they get this bad rap because we've cooked it incorrectly. We've broken off these branches, left them in a pot, boiled them, and gushed them up so much that when you actually serve them, not only are they no longer this flush green color, they're some sort of like a pukey brown, but they're also just super soggy and, well, gross. More so, all the nutrition you get from the fresh broccoli fizzles away as you cook it and cook it and cook it until it's no more than some mushy pile that not a kid or adult really wants to eat. So what can you do with broccoli to make it better? Well, number one, broccoli and peanut butter actually go together well. It's like celery and peanut butter. And as we know, broccoli and cheese go together great. You can dice broccoli and put it into eggs to make a great breakfast. So the next time you've got some broccoli laying around, try it. Pick it up, pick up your favorite knife, chop it into very fine pieces, then take that broccoli and mix it with your favorite pasta or with some greens to make a broccoli salad. You'd be amazed at what you can create. Mmm. Broccoli blueberry pasta salad. Hey, Mr. E, you want some broccoli? Mmm, broccoli. He says it's a little too dry. <sniffs> Lastly, what to do with those lemon pills, lime pills, and orange pills that you're just going to throw away anyway? The epic trio of lemon, orange, and lime. The lemon, lemon, and lime, the lemon, orange, and lime are a trio of citrus flavor. Of course, they have their cousin, the grapefruit, which if I had a grapefruit, I'd bring him into this party, but he's off on vacation today. The lemon, the orange, and the lime are great for adding flavor and citrus to any sort of food you're making, with some exceptions. As for the peels, though, often we just take them and throw them away. But the peel has a ton of nutrition and flavor you could capture. For example, orange chicken. Simply take the peel of the orange, cut it up into some chunks, and cook it with the chicken. The orange oil will come out of the orange and enter the food with that orangey perfume that no one can resist. The lemon and lime are the same. They have so much flavor that's unique that you could capture in your food. You could cook these with rice, with pasta, with meat, with desserts, with, well, Probably a lot of things that I don't come to my mind right now, but that's what your job is to explore. Well, that's it for today in Parkour Kitchen, episode six.